Well, e-government, e it is well designed, uh, and including the citizen input. There are ways you can uh, create e-government infrastructure that could possibly reduce uh, corruption and also make the system more accountable. Now, quick example. So if you look at the uh, Minister of Finance, let's say, and if you make the data available to the citizens, then you are able to uh, you know, see where the money is being spent and how it is spent and uh, what kind of an outcome has been achieved based on the, the investment or the, or the project. So making the project visible instead of if without the e-government you have no idea how the project is done and who got the contract and for how much so I'm giving you a whole bunch of details there that could be hidden or it's not visible but with the e-government as I said earlier if you make it more transparent the design uh, provides that access to the people so they will, therefore people will be able to say okay this ministry is uh, using the taxpayers money very well or not well and then when the election happens next year or whenever and then the citizens will be actually use their power uh, democratic power to change that so it is if the way things work like I, I outlined the e-government should be able to provide that transparency and accountability In Latin America, I mean, I think, you know, having this type of a meeting is uh, critical. And bring the regional uh, uh, countries to have uh, not only share ideas, but also brainstorm what would be the best type of things that will meet the needs of citizens in Latin America. You know? And also, you know, there's a cultural, cultural aspect that you have to factor into this. You know, some things work better than others. Uh, in this cultural context, so you, you know, factor that in and and share knowledge and creating a, a regional center that can bring all these different people to uh, uh, educate each other and train each other, share information, share data, share projects, and actually collaborate on projects together. That will actually uh, help the the pro uh, the the progress of e-government or development of e-government in the region. So uh, I see this as a very positive uh, uh, movement. I think that private public sector uh, opportunities exist in many projects that governments uh, have to undertake, especially the, the projects that will make a real impact on citizens, like uh, you know, controlling traffic, or, or monitoring traffic, as well as uh, collecting tax revenue, or issuing a business licenses, or, or you know, the processing uh, the custom uh, documentations. All these areas that I mentioned, there's an opportunity for private sector to play to deliver the project, or uh, advise the government, or co provide consultation. There are a range of things that private sector can do uh, to help the government uh, deliver a better service or product, and that's where you know those private pu public uh, partnership is uh, critical. But you know, you, in order to have that uh, w working relationship, the government has to have a clear strategy and have clear goals and uh, goals and objectives uh, for their e-government uh, implementation. Well, when it comes to communication, that is a challenge for all governments. And so I cannot really uh, give you one particular example where they do the best communication internally and externally. Perhaps uh, internally, some governments do good jobs. They have a clear vision, right, strategy, uh, goals and objectives, like a Korean case, and some other governments have that clearly defined, so they communicate internally very well. So uh, again, like a, the Korean government, uh, UK government, and uh, the uh, uh, Netherlands, for example, those governments do a really good job doing that. But other governments have a, uh, still have a long way to go because the internal communication is not clear, so that there's the 
the e-governance is not moving as a one, but moving as many different pieces. So that's not a good way of uh, you know, moving forward.